Simply Scuba presents the Deco Stop Podcast. Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba and welcome to the Deco Stop Podcast. I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Um, jumping straight in with website updates on the Simply Scuba website. So the big new one is the fourth element Halo AR undersuit. So this I think was leaked quite a long, long fair while away. So it's a fair amount of people already knew about it, knew that it was coming. Um, I think it was delayed um, because of everything that's been going on the past few years, um, but it's finally been released, and um, yeah, it's a very cool undersuit. Uh, I'm going to spend a bit more time later on uh, talking about it because it's my product of the week, um, but yeah, they're in stock over on, uh, on simplyscuba.com. We also have the Paralens Dive In Bundle, which is the Paralens Vaquita Dive Camera, but it also comes with the drop down like pistol grip, a lens cap and a travel case as well, uh, all in. So it's basically, I think all of those accessories work out free. So you're paying for the camera, but you get all the extra bits and bobs free. Um, so you're saving yourself about 143 quid. Um, so if you've been thinking about getting, now is a great time. Um, it's one of those things where once it's sold out, it's sold out, and then it just goes back to normal. Um, but yeah, that's on the uh, the website. If you just search for Paralens or Bundle, or, um, I'll put a link down in the description below so you can find it. <clears throat> and finally, we have the Avatar. Um, so this makes it quite tricky because nowadays when you type the word in Avatar, all it comes up with is either the James Cameron film or the Nickelodeon show. Um, so Avatar is a dry suit manufacturer and they have quite close ties with Santi uh, and Santi are widely regarded as one of the best dry suit manufacturers out there uh, and Avatar work very closely with them. You can see a lot of their inspirations in their designs. Uh, I think they even use some Santi technology in their um, like cuff seal system and whatnot. So, um, but Avatar dry suits are made to be a bit more budget friendly. So you're still getting a real top class suit uh, with really fine materials and testing and everything all of the flexibility and movement that you need in a dry suit however you don't have a huge price tag attached onto it so um, if you're in the market for a, a new dry suit for this diving season uh, yeah have a look at avatar they also have their new undersuit the uh, the 901 which is very different to uh, to anything that i've ever seen but very environmentally friendly as well it's it's all recycled um but yeah, that's um, a new brand for uh, for Simply Scuba. So uh, yeah, head over and check them out. Moving on to social channel updates on YouTube. Uh, on Friday on the Ask Mark show, I was answering questions about skinny neck seals. Someone had just bought themselves a new dry suit, but they're quite slender. They have a very narrow, skinny neck. So they were, every time they basically uh, sort of shoulders upright and they go upright, all the air rushes up to their neck and then it just escapes through the neck seal and there a little bit of water gets in they were wondering about ways to combat that that was either getting a, a smaller neck seal because neck seals do come in different sizes uh, you do get a smaller version um, so it might just be that the suit that they had had the the standard neck seal size and they actually just needed to uh, to swap that over or because it does seem to seal quite effectively against their neck it's only when they actually go upright um, it might be that they just need a little bit of extra they were asking about like some kind of latex um, uh, like choker thing um, that goes around your neck uh, that does kind of exist it's not made out of latex um, I actually don't know what it's made out of it's a weird like jelly material um, it's made by a brand called BioSeal, and it's this weird, stretchy, um, very unusual, it's really hard to describe. It's like jelly, but it doesn't um, sort of split when you stretch it. It's incredibly stretchy. And this just, yeah, creates this uh, sort of seal around your neck. You put it on first, and then you have this like black um, section around your neck and then your latex neck seal goes over the top of that and seals against that um, some divers use it because it just creates a more effective seal others if you have a latex allergy means that the latex isn't actually touching your skin either way uh, it's quite clever um, i was also answering questions about cold water undersuits um, 
diving here in the UK, what were my usual go-to uh, sort of undersuits nowadays? And it was a, it was kind of a toss-up between. I mean, my usual base layer um, for like year-round diving is the Fourth Element J2. Uh, nice, thin, very effective, and um, it just just simply does the job. It's a it's a good base layer to uh, to wick moisture, keep you nice and clean and warm. But as far as the undersuit goes, of course, now we have the uh, the new Halo AR. Again, I'll um, talk about it a little bit later. Uh, but personally, I dive the um, uh, the Santi BZ400X dry suit undersuit. Um, that's my usual go-to underneath my membrane dry suit. It's a good all-rounder. It's got plenty of flexibility. It comes in, struth, I think, 27 different sizes. Um, there's one that's LLL. Um, I mean, you normally get ML, which is medium large, um, MLL, which would be medium large long, um, and then yeah, you, you get LLL, which is large, long, larger. It is one of one of those weird ones. Um, but yeah, that's my usual go-to. And then they were also asking about heated undersuits, which I'm perfectly fine with as long as you um, uh, sort of make sure that the battery is topped up and you're using it properly. Um, someone's asking about speciality prerequisites, um, whether you could go from just paddy open water onto specialities, which is a mostly yes. There are some specialities where you do have to do your advanced open water, um, but in most cases it's actually beneficial to do your advanced open water because three of those five dives that you're doing in your advanced is the first dive in those respective specialities. Um, it, it's kind of, once you get your head around that concept, it's quite easy, but it's quite hard to describe it. Um, and hopefully I described it um, satisfactorily. Um, someone scratched their dive computer screen and they, uh, they want to know what the uh, the best thing to do about that was. Uh, it was a Shearwater Perdix and the Perdix comes with one of those scratch protectors factory fitted. So actually they might have got off quite lightly Otherwise, it's just a matter of having a chat with the, uh, the manufacturer, especially if it's Shearwater, because Shearwater as a brand and customer relations are just second to none. They're an amazing brand. Uh, and I think I read one testimonial later on on um, sort of Reddit or something, or maybe it was on um, uh, one of the dive forums, and they they literally had the same thing, and Shearwater just replaced it for them. They're, they're just an amazing company. Um, Someone was asking about high capacity cylinders, whether they needed to change their regulators. They were new to diving. Um, they're quite a heavy breather and they wanted to change from, I presume, uh, the standard like Alley 80 to a 130 cubic feet um, cylinder, uh, which is like going from a 12 litre to a 15, I think is the, um, to the British um, analogy. And um, wanted to know if they needed to, uh, to change their regulators in any way, which no, if you're changing volume, it's not an issue. The only issue comes is if you're changing um, working pressure. If you're going from a standard working pressure of like 232 bar to a high pressure cylinder, like 300, which would be a, a 3400 PSI to a 4400 PSI cylinder, and you're diving an A-clamp regulator, then you're gonna find that tricky because the higher pressure ones, they have to use a DIN fitting, that screw fitting, um, just for those higher pressures. And uh, someone basically asked which dive watch I was wearing, which is usually a, a toss up between two um, watches. I either have my Simply Scuba 500 meter watch or my uh, my Shearwater Terek. Those are my usual day-to-day uh, -day watches um, that I wear most of the time. On Google Answered, I was answering questions about dry suits. Um, it starts off on dry suits, and God bless the internet, it's, um, it was like, oh, what happens if you fart in a dry suit, and can you pee in a dry suit? The, uh, the, in the, the internet is a, is a wonderful place at times, but um, yeah, so, some of the questions. I answered them, in, in all honesty, and um, I think I ended up getting onto like, the free diving, that was it. So someone was asking why, or one of the uh, people who also asked questions was, why do I I need to pee during a dive, um, which is quite a common question. Um, I used to get it quite a lot. I used to um, teach in a swimming pool that was about 30 something degrees Celsius. Uh, we used to keep it quite warm because you'd spend a lot of time and that was our in-house um, swimming pool. And uh, and people during like 
long courses, they'd say, oh God, I need to get out and go to the loo again. So like, yeah, yeah, off you go. And they say, why, why do I need to uh, sort of pee so often? And it's basically because of something called immersion diuresis. Um, you have a, as soon as you immerse yourself in water, especially cold water, the skin temperature, uh, the skin receptors and whatnot, they pick up on that. And your body basically draws in all of your blood flow away from your extremities into your core and your kidneys are told how much urine to produce based on a particular hormone called ADH and normally when you have normal blood flow that ADH level is at a, a certain level which is all very fine but then when a, a vast majority of blood flow is pulled away from the extremities and into the core the concentration of that ADH increases so your kidneys go oh okay that we have too much um, bodily fluids I need to get rid of some so it ups the urine production so you need to pee so it is basically that um, dive brief on uh, on Sunday is the new in lots of new in bits and bobs from uh, what was it Aqualung Fourth Elements uh, some Cressy Hollis uh, the new BCD uh, basically everything that's arrived in May um, so that's quite an interesting one to go check out and next Tuesday I've got top tips for instructors or um, divers who want to get into teaching just a few helpful tips and tricks that I picked up over the years on how to be a more effective instructor. Just some little things that should hopefully help if you're um, thinking about becoming an instructor or if you're new to teaching. Um, just some things that I'd been taught, I'd learnt over the years, uh, just to uh, sort of make your your teaching a bit more effective. Moving on to new stories, the first one comes from Bedford Scuba Divers who managed to find a lady's lost wedding ring, uh, but not just any wedding ring, this was actually her grandmother's uh, wedding ring, so it's about 100 years old, uh, and it fell into the uh, the river Great Ouse uh, last Saturday, and she was devastated, but got in contact with the Bedford Scuba Divers, and the following day they um uh, they responded to her plea they managed to um, uh, sort of get into the water and they spent some time but they did find it uh, so she's very happy some nice pictures from that event um, fairly shallow water um, from what we can see especially around the bank it's only about knee deep uh, but still it, it does require a bit of time and patience to uh, to find a, um, a lost wedding ring so that's a nice news story that one came from goodnewsnetwork.org which is quite a nice uh, news website to uh, to come across Moving down to Mallorca, uh, some Spanish divers managed to free a 12 metre long humpback whale who was entangled in an illegal drift net off the Balearic Island. Um, so one of the divers was 32 year old marine biologist Gigi Torres uh, and they said um, last Friday's rescue um, had a little gesture of appreciation from the giant mammal um, and it was also a birthday present for her um, so this was a, um, a 12 meter long humpback whale that had got tangled up in uh, in fishing netting and these divers went out to go help and the, the the whale basically just started to relax as soon as the divers were on scene apparently knew why they were there to uh, to help it out and they uh, they managed to remove all of the netting and uh, and free it up so um they say that the the whale had been spotted and appeared to be in a weakened state um by a ship that was passing by about five kilometers off the eastern coast of Mallorca um and that uh, they then managed to get in contact with Palma de Mallorca's um, uh, aquarium marine rescue um, center uh, and those guys and girls uh, sort of immediately kitted up and uh, and headed out to go and try and find it there is video of it uh, which is pretty cool to see and yeah, you just see how this ghost gear really just wraps up and entangles things and there was no chance of the the whale freeing itself. Um, but yeah, amazing to see these um, scuba divers and snorkelers helping out and, uh, and freeing this humpback whale. The next news story comes from the Philippines and I can't find a great deal of information on this, um, but I'll report what I can. This comes from the inquirer.net and this is a, a female diver apparently lost consciousness during a dive. They say that her uh, scuba set basically failed and, uh, and stopped working. Um, she's around 15 to 18 meters underwater, but the diver 
was recovered and um, brought back to the surface by the Philippine Coast Guard, uh, she was given CPR. She um, she was able to gain consciousness again uh, after CPR, and then it says, however, she experienced difficulty breathing, dizziness, and a headache, and she was taken to the uh, the Port of Porto Princesa city um, to the nearest hospital for medical assistance, and that's where the news story ends. So hopefully. Um, all ended well. Uh, I couldn't find any other information from this, just the um, uh, no names or anything. Um, the most you can see is on uh, on MY Nariana, um, but hopefully this had a, um, a positive outcome and um, and she she ended up fine. But um, yeah, well well done to the uh, to the Philippine Coast Guard for uh, for recovering her. And the final news story comes from Cornwall. Um, there's investigations underway at two water courses in Cornwall after reports of pollution and dead fish. Uh, so the environment agencies were called to Paloma Stream in Wadebridge on Tuesday after reports of water discoloration and dead fish. Uh, teams have also been out to the uh, to the River Ottery in Jacobstow near um, uh, Longkinson to assess local fish population after a pollution incident there. So so if you're diving off the northern coast of Cornwall this weekend um, or even later, just double check and do uh, make sure that you are being very, very careful. Um, check local news reports and start asking around. Um, they say if you do find any dead fish to uh, not move them, um, if you can take a photo and report it to the environment agents uh, or agency, sorry just to uh, investigate the cause of the incident to try and find out what the uh, the issue is uh, and how it can impact the the fish and the water quality and, uh, and wildlife and everything uh, but obviously for us as divers um, yeah, you do have to uh, sort of be extra careful because uh, you don't want to get sick yourself until they find out exactly what this was uh, so if you are on that sort of north almost western coast of, um, of Cornwall uh, just do be a little bit careful and if you do see something strange um, do your best to, uh, to report it to the environment agency. Next we move on to my product of the week which is of course the fourth element Halo AR dry suit undersuit. So this is a, a new dry suit undersuit for them. Uh, this is now their sort of flagship dry suit undersuit to keep you nice and warm. Uh, I managed to get my hands on one uh, a week or two ago and the first thing that's struck me with this undersuit is just how thin it is. Um, especially when you compare it to like my BZ400, which isn't a particularly lofty undersuit. Um, but this is like a few millimeters thick. But because they're using special fabrics and materials, um, this Argon Aerogel, it's it's an incredibly warm undersuit with minimal bulk. So plenty of flexibility you've got lots of movement around in it but you don't have all of that additional buoyancy that you tend to get with thicker undersuits so you can go diving longer or diving in colder waters and you don't have to carry as much lead to help you get down. Um, so they say incorp uh, incorporating highly advanced thermal technology and one of the most insulating materials ever developed, the Halo AR's performance exceeds expectations of any diving undersuit. Um, the technology, this argon um, aerogel in this uh, compression resistant matrix is or was originally created for space exploration uh, and cryogenics. They're yep yeah, space age technology trying to work out this material that's very thin but very warm and insulating at the same time and of course that's perfect for scuba diving um so it it manages to create this low bulk but extremely warm dry suit undersuit um another thing that's quite different is that the entry zipper runs around your chest instead of straight down the center uh so you have this un uh, unbroken sort of central chest section uh, to give you all of that insulation uh, two-way zipper as well you do have um, access for a p-valve um, on the left or the right they're they're uncut but they're ready if you um, if you use a p-valve um, and yeah just lots of little things about it is um, just nice and comfortable like the the thumb loops are proper fleece thick 
um, loops to to really sort of go around your cuff and um, and around your thumb com compared to some others which is just a, a small section of bungee which if you use that to um, uh, underneath a dry glove system they can start to dig in in that uh, I don't know what you call it but the the crook of your thumb um, I find my one tends to dig in a little bit after a while so I don't do that anymore um, but this one just very soft fleece line so very very comfortable comes in its own dry bag one of the light dry bags um, it's got a slightly different design you'll see it in the video if you head over to um, uh, to our YouTube or if you're listening to this on YouTube watch it next um, so yeah you, you get a, a repurposable uh, lightweight decent sized dry bag that you can uh, reuse for whatever you want um, but yeah uh, all in it's a very nice dry suit undersuit and um, yeah back to my first point is just how thin it is um despite the the warmth that you get from it so um yeah if you're in the market if you're getting into dry suit undersuits you want to be diving in colder waters or something and you just want one dry suit that will do everything uh then yeah halo ar definitely worth uh, sort of checking it out now, I originally thought that this was replacing Halo 3D uh, because it has the, the same naming, so I figured this was just an, a replacement for the 3D. I don't actually know if 3D is dropping out of their range. As much as it's still on their website, um, I don't know if they're going to continue to manufacture the 3D. The 3D basically has mesh panels which are uncompressible so over the chest and uh, and on your upper thigh it has these sections that basically prevent compression so when you're laying flat whilst you're diving it maintains that constant layer of insulation all over your um, uh, your front so you're not losing any insulation over your chest so i originally thought that it, it was the ar was going to replace the 3d but it doesn't look like that's the case as much as they are out of stock of some sizes they do have a majority of sizes in stock uh, at the moment for the uh, for the Halo 3D so it might be that that one's continuing uh, but it seems that the uh, the AR is the new flagship model for the uh, the fourth element dry undersuit range and my question of the week comes from Reddit. Uh, someone on Reddit asked if, um, or just asked for thoughts on diving with colourful gear. They'd apparently been talking to a quote unquote technical diver who said, unless it's black, it's, it's not meant for scuba diving or something. And it was quite nice to see a majority, if not all of the comments down below were just, no, just dive, dive in whatever colour you want. And actually, most of the actual technical divers um, that I know of and that I've spoken to and seen their dive equipments, it's it's as colourful as anything. Uh, I mean, you just got to look at the um, uh, the divers from uh, who go to collect ghost gear. Most of them are in bright orange. Um, I mean, a lot of tech divers, they're just in red and you see a lot of yellows and whatnot. So... No, I, I don't think there's an issue with colourful gear. Myself, I tend to go with uh, bright blues. I quite like electric blues. Um, I my um, uh, my three mil shorty is a fourth element uh, Xenos, and I almost let's let's just say one of the main reasons why I got that particular dry suit uh, correction uh, shorty is that it was bright blue. Um, it's not. I think they have discontinued that colorway of the um, uh, of the Xenos because they also played it safe and made a um, a, a grey version, which is more popular. I think I've spoken about it on the podcast previously. Why we uh, most um, uh, sort of wetsuits and whatnot are black, and a lot of it just comes down to safety. It's a lot safer for the uh, the manufacturers to bring out black dive equipment because black goes with everything um 
but yeah, I, I love a, a splash of colour and everyone has their own specific thing. I know a guy and if it comes in pink, he'll go for it um, because very few other people go for um, uh, those colourways and he knows that this is his pair of fins or this is his dive bag or whatever. Um, and in the water, it helps you recognize who's who. Um, if everyone has the exact same pair of black fins, or even if they're not the same design, that a lot of them, especially from a distance or in poor visibility, a black pair of fins looks like a black pair of fins. And that's how I tend to identify divers, by looking at their fins. You see them on the deck of the boat and you go, okay, well that's Fred. Fred's diving a blue pair of scuba pro whatever um whereas fran she's wearing a, a yellow pair of um i don't know hollis uh so then you you get to know oh, okay that's that's fran over there in the distance uh you can you can pick people out based on their fins it doesn't really matter which direction they're facing as long as you can see their fins you can tend to identify people but as far as colorways nah just go with Go with whatever you want. The one thing that uh, I would mention is that obviously reds become brown very quickly um, as you start to lose reds, um, uh, red wavelengths underwater. Uh, yellow stays pretty yellow for quite a long time. Um, orange, yeah, starts to go the sort of brownie colors um, a bit deeper down. But with a torch, all of those colors come back um, that's one reason why I went for um, uh, for blue just because blues are always blues granted it kind of blends in a bit with the blue water but as long as you can make the outline you can usually tell whether it's blue um, you of course get white but white for me um, where I dive in the UK a fair amount uh, yeah white gets grubby pretty quickly um, and it, it uses that um, uh, that that shine, that sparkle. Um, it, it's still quite easy to see under the water, but yeah, it, it does start to uh, to look grubby after a while. But no, no I mean, I kind of get bored if stuff comes in just black. I do like the um, uh, some of the newer designs that are coming out, and they have um, uh, like a, a gloss and then a matte finish, and that does help to break it up a little bit. But Oh yeah, if if all of your gear is black and you're just one of these like sort of ninja divers, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you do you. If you don't want a flash of um, color, then that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, but if everyone is wearing exactly the same like matte black, then oh, truth, no. Then everyone's gonna start to uh, sort of get lost under the water. So. Um, now nah, I'm I'm perfectly fine. It seems that most people online are perfectly fine with a flash of color. So um, yeah, you do you. The tricky bit comes is trying to get it to match. That's one of the reasons why Tusa was um, uh, was always very popular with their colorways because they managed to find, however they do it, a way to get all of the different materials to match the same hue and colorway. Uh, I was talking with, um, oh, I forget who, but they, they were from Sunto, and they were saying how tricky it is to get the color of the silicone straps to match the color of the hard plastic of their D4, uh, or one of the D4i or Novos, how to get those colorways to match exactly, which is why you don't see too many um, different colors on uh, dive computers unless it is literally just the strap because trying to make those colors match 100% so it doesn't look odd especially after a year or so that's really really hard um, so that's another reason why you don't see um, too many just universal colors on uh, on dive computers like the D4i Novo they got the that electric blue and the uh, the lime green those are kind of the only two colors um they they did have some previously but yeah going forward it's it's really really tricky trying to get different materials to have the exact same color so it matches and it doesn't look weird uh, especially over time with discoloration but yeah, uh, diving with colourful gear, I'm perfectly fine with it. I dive with a lot of bright blue kit, so um, yeah. But if you're into colours, let us know down in the uh, in the comments below what your accent colour is and um, and what you would like to see under the water. Because the um, 
Another one of the popular ones is that um, uh, Aqualung Aquaflex, the, uh, the the women's version with that kind of purple star constellation. Uh, that was great. That was very different compared to anything else. And I'm seeing a lot of natural patterns from some of the smaller manufacturers. You see a lot of the um, uh, whale shark dots on suits. I've seen quite a few with like tiger shark stripes and stuff. So um, yeah, I think moving forwards, we're hopefully going to start seeing a bit more um, uh, flair as it were. And there's definitely a market for it. I think people are starting to get a little bit bored of just black wetsuits. And that's it for this week for the podcast. Thank you for listening, everybody. Um, I can't promise that I'll make a, uh, a podcast for next weekend because it's the Queen's birthday or something. Um, we get an extra two days off next week, so I probably won't have enough time to do a podcast. If I do, um, then obviously I'm, I'm wrong now, but uh, I've got a lot of other things that I need to uh, get doing and I've got a, a five-day week. I've got to try and compress that into a three-day week. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have the time, so I make no promises. Um, but anyway, thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, remember to follow, like, subscribe, um, rate us, comments, wherever you are uh, on whatever platform it is, uh, whatever it's called, thumbs up or five stars or whatever it is, because um, that really does help us grow. Uh, especially over on YouTube and Instagram. If you could, we're trying to get to 10K on Instagram and 100K over on YouTube because that starts to unlock a lot of additional features that we can do so we can start to do a bit more interactive stuff. Um, but also, if you're shopping for new equipment, head over to simplyscuba.com. For everything that I've mentioned in the, uh, the podcast today, uh, I'm going to pop a link down in the description below so you can go straight to it. If not, if you just go over to simplyscuba.com, we've got a search bar at the top, so it's pretty easy for you to find stuff. Um, if you've got any questions, comments, queries, or corrections to anything that you've heard today, um, or anything that you haven't heard today, uh, let me know down in the YouTube comments. And if you use the hashtag AskMark in your comment, it makes it a lot easier for me to find it, and I will get to it on the Friday Ask Mark show. Thank you very much for listening, everybody, and of course, safe diving.